Hello everybody. My name is Andrea Patton with A. Patton Fine Art. Today we are going to learn how to paint this beautiful autumn birch tree scene on graphics Durabrite white paper or you could also call it pH neutral polypylene film. It's non-staining, it's heat tolerant, it's heavyweight, and it's non-absorbent. It's just perfect for painting with alcohol inks. So some of the supplies that I have today are the paper, which I cut into a size six by nine inches. I used incredible white mask liquid frisket. This is sort of like, the only way I can explain it is like a glue that prevents the inks from going into the areas that you want to stay white. And when you apply it, be sure and follow all the directions. You get a little nib which you dip into water and blot, and then you dip the nib into the frisket and flow it on lightly. You rinse the nib often and never allow the frisket to dry on, on the points of the nib and do not apply to wet paper. And it takes about three hours or more for this to dry before you can paint on it. I actually put this together last night and it was very dry this morning. I have a wet paper towel here that I am wetting this nib and I'm gonna take just a little bit, I'm gonna show you on this other paper here how to do it. It's pretty easy. Just rub it on, I'm gonna dip it again and just keep applying. All right, and then I'm going to wet mine again because they said don't let the frisket dry on on this nib. I like this nib because I used to use a paintbrush and you can definitely ruin paintbrushes that way. Um, however, you can you can dip it into soapy water. There's other ways to do it, but I like this nib. All right, so this is all dry. And I want to show you some of the other things that I have. Just three paint brushes. We have a flat number six. We have a couple rounds, small rounds. This is a zero five. And this one, it doesn't say the number, probably a one. But I always like to have at least three paint brushes. I've got the alcohol ink blending pen, which I will use to remove the ink. I have Valencia Orange and Dandelion Yellow. Let's see, those are both Ranger. Uh, here's a Tim Holtz Sailboat Blue. And then I use the Nara alcohol inks this is called Herbie Snack. I love the name. I like this color because it's not a bright green since in the summer, I mean in the fall, excuse me, you're not going to have bright green grass. I also have alcohol ink, pitch black ranger. I have a little container of alcohol in case I want to clean my brushes. A couple Q-tips little plastic palette, the very important alcohol blending solution. This one's by Tim Holtz. And we're going to show you how to remove the frisket. You can use this rubber piece or you can use your fingers. So, oh, and of course your paper towel. Always have a paper towel handy. So with this painting, I'm going to create the sky first, then the grass, then I'm going to add the orange leaves, and then 
we will peel off the frisket and add the color to the birch trees. And then in the very end, we can add detail with a Sharpie, black Sharpie. So let's get going. First thing I'll do, I'm gonna open my sailboat blue and never open your inks on top of your painting because the little crumbly pieces can come off of the cap. We've all learned the hard way, I think. So we're gonna add blending solution in the middle where the sky is. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue, not too much. Less is more, I think. You can always add more and blend it around. Work with it while everything is wet. Got a little piece of hair on there. You can add a little more blending solution. But I would say definitely use less ink and more blending solution. You can get a beautiful, just kind of light coming through. Let it, let it do its thing. Leave the area up here clear for your leaves. All right, now I am going to add some grass. and use any colors you want, honestly. You can have a purple sky, you can have a pink sky, you can have a green sky. I just prefer to have the blue. Now I'm not even cleaning my paintbrush with the green because green and blue mix very nicely together. Add more blending solution here and a few drops of the green ink. If it starts moving too fast up into the sky, you can always lift it, hold it up, and you can always blow on your paper to slow down the movement of the inks. It's nice to kind of have some open white spots in here so that you can add some leaves or maybe a little bit of yellow highlights. You can push the brush up to make a grass effect. And while it's still wet, maybe dip into your yellow here and add just a little bit of yellow in there for highlights. All right. Now, dried off my brush. I am going to use the yellow and the orange for the sky. And if you wish, you can dip into your palette here and your with your paintbrush, and you could dab it on this way. Or you can, and this is the way I did it on this one. I added blending solution, and then I dropped the ink on. So it's really up to you how you do it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow, a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and add drops of orange. Valencia orange, that is. And with, with your medium round paintbrush, mix it around. So 
it's all kind of looking abstract. And go right up to the edge of the blue. It's okay if it blends and turns into kind of a green because it's the end of autumn and maybe there's some more green leaves on the tree. I like that. Go down here and add a few bits of orange, whatever colors on your paintbrush. Maybe some leaves have fallen. If you want to actually get this to white, you'll take your blending pen and remove the green ink. So you can dip into whatever color you like. I dipped into my orange and I'm just gonna just barely touch that. Again, a little goes a long way and it's maybe the illusion of some leaves that have fallen, right? And you can just dab right into your palette now and apply some little leaves. I love the way that got dark on the edge. I think that's that's beautiful. Now that should be almost dry. Dry so very fast. Okay, I am now going to remove the frisket. And again, there's two ways to do it. You can use your finger, which is actually my preferred way. I like to, there's something satisfying about removing this. <laughs> sure it all comes off and you have a nice white tree to add we'll be adding some uh, light 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 gray very um, mixed with blending solution I'll take the black and really dilute it and start out with the lightest gray background and then add to it with darker black. You can add you know, different colors. You can add oranges to the bark. You know, maybe some reflection of the yellow into the bark. Little blue is okay. okay I'm gonna show you this too. I, again, I, I have used it this way before, but I prefer I prefer the other way. I seem to have, for me, I seem to have more control. This gets pretty stuck on there. <laughs> it's fun either way. Fun to do. So I've got all kinds of thin little trees in the background. Almost done here. Try to put the the thicker trees up front a little bit up closer and totally fine if some ink seeped into it. We can use that to our advantage really. We can play with it. Just to me there's no mistakes in alcohol inking. Every painting will come out differently. 
All right, now let me see, did I get it all? I think so. All you do is feel. Okay. Oh, there's a little bit up here. It's all about the touch. All right, so we're ready to work on our trees. What I'm gonna do here is take the blending marker here, blending pen, and if you want, you can do this. You can remove some of uh, the ink that seeped through. Totally up to you. But I love the way there's little, little nibs here and little bumps and things like that. We're also gonna add some branches. Okay, now I have black in here, but I am gonna take my blending solution, put it right in this palette, and go with the smallest brush and just touch that black. Can make you can mix it the side however you want and don't have it too full of a blending solution it's funny that almost looks like a brown but it was black look totally fine okay we'll see see if it starts spreading too fast again blow it and then if you want to lighten that area just clean it with your blending solution dip it in there and I'm gonna say the Sun is coming to the right so I'm gonna make the left side darker so you go through and do a light wash, I guess you could call it a wash, of the blending solution with a little black ink in there or brown ink. And put a little darker area to the left. That one's really starting to move. I'm going to blow on it. totally didn't ruin it because it's kind of bumpy I mean that's what trees trees can look like that's very strange that that black is uh, coming out brown <laughs> put some more up there kind of a brownish red or something ah that's looking more black there we go yeah that's that's looking I wonder if my, my brushes were clean. Who knows? You never know. All right, let's see here. Oh, I just splattered some. No problem. No problem at all. I'm blowing on it. Again, a little bit goes a long way. And they can all they can all have a little bit of a different color if you want. They don't all have to look exactly the same. And then the fun part, I think, the real fun part is coming up and that's adding the details of the bark and the leaves and the branches i am such a detail person it's just it's my favorite part it's kind of turned a pinkish blue that happens sometimes on this type of paper when you add the blending solution but uh 
For me, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I love what it does. Always have your paper towel handy in case you need to dab your uh, brush to, to dry it just a little bit. And I didn't mention this, but always have good ventilation in your room. I have a, two ventilation systems built into the ceiling of my art studio. Uh, we just built this house and uh, we had that done because I'll be teaching a lot of classes here. I live in New Braunfels, Texas which is central Texas in between Austin and San Antonio. So if you're ever in the area and you want to take a lesson, check out my website, apattonfineart.com. I think that's what it's called at least. <laughs> my son just built me a new website and uh, I went from one website to another but it's, it's really, I love it because people can actually go on there and sign up for lessons right on, uh, right on the website now. It used to, uh, I used to do it all through uh, Airbnb experiences, which worked out really nice, but it's nice to be able to have it, you know, in one place, if that makes sense. All right, I think... I'm going to take some of these all the way up to the top. Got a little orange in there. That's all right. I'll just put leaves over it. Okay. Now I am going to add a little more black to my paintbrush and start kind of, you know how birch trees or any tree <laughs> is round. So do a little um, kind of a U shape to give it the illusion of a round tree, three dimensional, uh, not so flat. So just kind of quickly go through it like that. And honestly, you could spend hours uh, working on the details of a tree and the, 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 little, the little marks and things like that. I, I actually love painting trees. But this is, uh, I'm not going to keep you here all day. But look at, look at some good photos of birch trees. There's so many beautiful photos out there. You can go on Pixabay. Pixabay is a great place to get free reference photos for artists that are royalty free. So that is where I get a lot of my ideas. Living in Texas, we do not have birch trees here, at least not that uh, not in my area. There might be some, I bet you there's some up north, way up north west, I would think, but I personally haven't seen them. Uh, I, I lived in Alaska for a few years and oh my gosh, they had so many gorgeous birch trees there, just forests and forests. And if you live up north in Colorado or somewhere, I bet you, you guys have them. Up there, we have lots of oak trees here in Texas. And in the spring, we have our very famous wildflowers. I just finished uh, spreading, I'd say, mm, 100,000 seeds in my back and front yard. We bought, uh, you know, on this, on this uh, place that we built, we have an acre and a half of land. So I'm just spreading the seeds. And in the spring... We will see what happens. All right. So you can get as detailed as you want. But I think for now, 
that's it with the paint brush. I am going to now put on a few more leaves here. I've got the same brush that had orange and yellow on it. So I'm going to just add just a few little dots. You don't have to go too detailed. Or you can go as detailed as you want. For me, this is more, a little more abstract. That's the fun thing about alcohol inks. You can do abstract background and then details in other areas to make it look like very realistic with the realism. And remember, the more you put on there, the bigger it grows. See that little tiny leaf really grew. So just, just barely touch it. I'm going to go into my yellow. Grab a little yellow. Just go right on top of the, the bark. Maybe add a few more on the ground. You can even add a little color to your to your bark here if you want. A little reflections. Why not? All right, now the final part of this painting is a little Sharpie Black Permanent Fine Point. Love this part. All right, I am going to put a black line on the left side of the tree because we've got the light coming on the right. Does not have to be perfect unless you want to spend a lot of time Make it kind of fun. Did I even do that one? Let's see. And then we are going to add some branches. I'd say just have a little starting point and come out and just have fun with it. Not too many, I would just, I just put a few. You don't want the branches to overpower, but you also want a little realism maybe. One more thing is if you like, you can make little marks on your bark here, little dots. Again, study, if you wish, birch trees and look at their bark it's all very interesting there's all kinds of little movement all kinds of little lines and dashes and maybe a little darker on the bottom zigzags they're they're fun trees and that my friends is it sign it and then there you go you've got a, a christmas gift for someone that you love and look this one to me is is very different wish i could put them side by side let's see they're different they're different i like them both i have two gifts to give away too <laughs> okay thank you everybody and take care have fun inking be sure to try dura bright white by graphics wonderful paper have fun. Bye.